Okay, this video is about matrices, their definitions, and some basic matrix operations. Okay, there's a major operation we're not going to cover in this video, but I'll dedicate an entire video to that particular op operation called matrix multiplication. Okay, so here's our little intro here. Uh, matrix is just a rectangular array of numbers. In fact, in computer science, they often call these arrays okay instead of matrices okay the singular is matrix like the movie uh, the plural is matrices okay all right let's talk about uh, this example one okay this is an example of a matrix here you can see yep it looks like a rectangular array of numbers uh, the way I do it I use the square brackets in my matrices uh, you will also see just big parentheses in some people's okay so instead of square brackets, they might have parentheses. Uh, it's typical for people to give a matrix a name that is a capital Latinic letter. So here I gave the name cap A, or just we'll just say A, uh, to this particular matrix. Okay, so this is an example of a matrix. If I read across, it'd be 7, 11, negative 12, 0, 5, 8. Okay, now we need to talk about the dimensions of a matrix here. Starting from the upper left-hand corner, okay, so like reading a book, starting from the upper left-hand corner, reading across, we have the first row, okay? So if I read across, that's going to give me a row. So you can see that would be in this matrix above 7, 11, negative 12, as you can see. So that's what we would call the first row, okay? The second row is obtained by going down and reading across. So the second row would be what? 0, 5, 8. Okay. So this particular matrix has two rows. Okay. Now starting again in the upper left hand corner. Okay. Reading down, we have the first column. You can see it's 7, 0 here. Let's go back up. So this is the first column. Okay. Right there. So 7, 0. What's the second column? Well, come across and then read down. 11, 5. Okay. And then the third column is negative 12, 8. Columns go up and down. Okay. You think about columns holding up uh, uh, the roof of a building. Okay. So they go up and down, but rows go across. Okay. All right. So there I've noted the various ro rows and columns here. Okay, and there's the statement that it has three columns. So with this particular matrix, it has two rows and three columns. When we talk about the dimensions of a matrix, then, we would say it is a two by three. Okay, so two by three. All right. The first number that appears in the dimensions is uh, always the number of rows. That's just our convention. The second number is the number of columns. So up here, this was what? Two rows, three columns, so that is a two by three. Okay? Two by three. Two times three is six, is the total number of entries actually in the matrix. You notice how many numbers in the array? How many numbers are there? Two times three is six, right? Okay? All right. So here I note that dimensions is always number of rows, and the second number is always number of columns. How about this one, then? If I give the name B to this matrix, okay, reading across, 1, 3, 2, 5, okay, this would be what? This has clearly two rows and two columns, so it would be a 2 by 2 matrix. By the way, I throw this in here, a matrix in which the number of rows is equal to the number of columns is called a square matrix, okay? You can see then what B above is a square matrix, right? Number of rows equals the number of columns. Our original matrix was what? A is 2 by 3. That is not a square matrix, okay? Throw this in at the end here. Just a quick definition here. Okay, this is stuff from uh, linear algebra and also from uh, physics here. A matrix with a single row or column I guess I say column first, so let's say that. A matrix with a single column or a single row is called a vector, okay? 
So if I created this one and I said c is 1, 2, negative 3, you can see there's only, what, a single column here? So this is actually what we would call a column vector, okay? Alrighty, very common in physics and linear algebra to use that terminology. All right, let's talk about some operations between matrices and stuff, okay? The first operation is going to be not between matrices, but uh, something called scalar operation, uh, scalar multiplication. This is between a scalar and an actual matrix. This is very easy. Now, first of all, I'm going to say here, a scalar is just a fancy word for number. It comes from physics. For those people that know some physics, a what? A scalar quantity is a quantity without, uh, with just magnitude, but not direction. A vector is what? A scalar with both quantity and direction. Okay? All right. And these would show you um, 1, 2, negative 3, uh, the magnitudes in the various directions making up the vector. Okay? Well, don't worry about that. Anyway, so when we talk about scalar, just think of a number. Okay? So it's not a matrix itself. It's just a number. Okay? Uh, we can multiply a scalar, a number, by a matrix or on a matrix if you wish. For example, let's say I was interested in finding a 4 times A, okay? So my scalar is 4, and A is going to be the same matrix I used in example 1. So I'm going to make this statement, 4A is 4 times, see I usually like parentheses around this, and then my matrix, uh, reading across 7, 11, negative 12, 0, 5, 8. It's very simple. That scalar is simply going to multiply on every entry in the matrix, okay? So that's going to be 4 times 7 is 28, uh, 44, negative 48, reading across here. 4 times 0 is 0, so we got that. 4 times 5 is 20, 4 times 8 is 32. So there, okay? Scalar multiplication should be very easy. 5, 5 times B, okay? 5B, okay? B is, once again, that second matrix in example 2, okay? 5 times 1, 3, 2, 5 should be 5, 15, 10, 25, like you see here. So very simple. 0B, okay? 0 times B is 0. Multiplies on every single entry. We get zeros um, uh, for all the entries then. Okay, very simple. Scalar multiplication. Let's talk about addition and subtraction of matrices, okay? In order to add or subtract two matrices, they must have the same dimensions, okay? That's necessary in sufficient conditions for you be, to be able to add or subtract them. They just have to have the same dimensions. Let's just take a quick example here. Here I've got uh, two 3 by 2 matrices, which I note down here. Okay? They're both 3 by 2. And I want you to add them. How do you think you're going to add them? Well, what you simply do is add corresponding entries. So the entry in what? The first row and first column you're going to add to the first row and first column entry in the second matrix. Just to add those together, there's our operation. And that will give you, what, uh, 1 plus 0 is 1. That will go in the first row and first column of our uh, uh, summoned, our matrix answer here. Okay, 3 and 1 is 4. That's going to go down here. You can see. So you're just adding corresponding entries. So it should be really, really simple here. I think I did my arithmetic correctly everywhere. Okay, uh, yeah, I think so. Okay, so very simple. Now, if I was going to subtract the two matrices, the only difference is what? You're going to take the difference. You're going to subtract corresponding entries here. So 1 minus 0 is 0. 2 minus negative 7 is 2 plus 7. That's 9. And so forth throughout the matrix. Okay, and I think I got that one as well. Okay, now let's try something else here. I've got a 3 by 2 matrix. To that, I'm going to add a 3 by 1 matrix, as you can see here. So that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, plus 0, 2, 0, reading down in this matrix. And I write DNE. Okay, this is sometimes written in mathematics by students and professors. It just means does not exist. There's just no such thing as the sum of these two matrices. Because why? Because they have different dimensions here. Okay, we can't add corresponding entries because, 
for example, in this matrix uh, right there at that position, the two in the first row and second column, there's no corresponding entry in the second matrix because it's just, what, a column vector. It only has a single vector, okay? So you can't do it. All right, let's combine a few operations here, okay? Example 9, suppose I give the name to this 2x2 uh, two two matrix. E is 2, 1, 7, 13, and F is negative 5, 0, 6, 7, okay? Uh, if I asked you to find 3E plus 4F, what you're going to do is write the statement 3E plus 4F, and that's actually substitute for E and F, and here are the actual matrices. So I've got 3 times 2, 1, 7, 13, plus 4 times negative 5, 0, 6, 7, okay? And you can see these have the same dimensions here, so we are actually going to get an answer for this besides does not exist, okay? Uh, this is just scalar multiplication, so that 3 multiplies on every entry. 6, 3, 21, 39. To that we will add, what? Negative 20, 0, 24, 28, which is the result of 4 times the uh, matrix, the second matrix there, okay? Now they have the same dimensions as noted here, so we just add corresponding entries, and we get negative uh, 14, 3, 45, and 67. Okay, so that would be our answer. Okay. By the way, these are 2 by 2 matrices. Okay, let's maybe throw this in here. If I had any 2 by 2 matrix, and I created this matrix, which is also 2 by 2, consisting solely of zeros, you see that I could do what? This is would be what we would call the 2 by 2 additive identity, because I could add this matrix to any 2 by 2 matrix, and it would leave that matrix unchanged, okay? So this is what we would call the 2 by 2 additive identity. Now, you could create an additive identity for the matrix of any dimension, right? Okay? It would consist solely of entries that are zero here. So I would just throw that in at the end here. Now, there's one other minor operation here that becomes uh, important in certain situations. It may not be greatly important in uh, <clears throat> overall in what we're doing here, but it will be helpful when we start talking about uh, matrix multiplication here. I'm going to talk about the transpose of a matrix, okay? It's written here with a super subscript afterwards, like a, it looks like a power almost. Uh, a cap T is what I use, okay? So I teach linear algebra, and I use the cap T because that's what we're used to. Uh, some people will use a little t here, okay? But this just is A transpose or the transpose of A, okay? It's very simple. It's obtained by interchanging each row for a column, Okay, so the first row becomes the first column of the transpose, the second row becomes the second column of the transpose, and so forth. Okay, probably the easiest way to, to see how to find the transpose is to look at a concrete example here. Okay, so it's really easy here. Okay, so here's my matrix uh, A again. Yes, this is the same one I used before. This has dimensions, what, 2 by 3, as we've noted multiple times already. Okay, what's the first row? The first row is 7, 11, negative 12. Well, that's going to become the first column of my transpose. So I've got 7, 11, negative 12 again, but this time is written as a column up and down instead of across, okay? Then the second row here is what? 0, 5, 8. That's going to be what? The second column, okay? So that becomes 0, 5, 8, written up and down. What is the dimensions of a transpose? You can see, since I've interchanged rows for columns, it is now going to have dimensions 3 by 2 instead of 2 by 3. Okay? And you can see that's, of course, always going to happen when you're taking a transpose. You will have uh, dimensions that are interchanged from uh, your previous dimensions on the matrix you started with. Okay? By the way, you can also see Another way of interpreting the transpose is I did what? <clears throat> I took the first column of A and turned it into what? 
the first row of A transpose, the second column of A, and turned it into what? The second row of A transpose, and the, and so forth, I guess I should say, right? Okay. All right. That's another way to think about it. So uh, I could have rewritten this differently here. Okay. I could have written that uh, definition or how to do it differently. Okay. But either way, I think it's a pretty easy operation and you can get it here. All right. <clears throat> There's where I noted the dimension change. Okay. Okay. This is a square matrix B1325 again. Okay. You can see if I'm going to take its transpose, its dimensions are going to be unchanged then, right? B transpose is going to be what? Uh, <clears throat> first row becomes the first column, so 1, 3, and then what? Uh, 2, 5 written up and down. So there's the transpose. Okay? Still 2 by 2. Here's a, Let's take this matrix I'm calling G. Okay? 1, 3, 3, 4, reading across. Okay? When I take its transpose, I'll interchange the first row for the first column, and I would get 1, 3, and then I'd have 3, 4 written up and down. And that's the same thing as G. Okay, G is equal to its own transpose. That becomes uh, very significant in certain uh, parts of linear algebra here. These are really nice matrices for certain reasons that I will probably not explain at all. But anyway... A matrix equal to its own transpose is sometimes called symmetric, okay? So G, we would say, is a symmetric matrix. Okay, all right, I'm sure you understood all this stuff. It's pretty easy here. Uh, the, what's coming up next is what we call that uh, less intuitive, less easy operation called matrix multiplication. Okay, all right.